Including the Women Survivor Series team just six days before the actual event, a new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Retribution being kind of successful, the dream tag team match we've been waiting for, and it looks like the only title for title match that we have hype going into this Sunday, and Team Raw being Team Raw, I guess? Welcome to the new and improved Kimmy Talk Wrestling with Kimmy's Top 5, starting right now. So basically, in the intro, like, like I said, instead of talking about the entire three hours, we are mainly going to talk about the top five things that I found interesting. Woo. So I'll start off with our new additions of Team Raw. So if you saw last week, Mandy Rose possibly got injured in their match. It was Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke versus Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, I believe, or they were in some type of tag team match. Man Oh, Mandy goes over the top rope and her arm clutched onto the rope and it looked like she suffered a shoulder injury. This proved to be true as last night on Raw in the six man tag team match where it was Asuka, Mandy, and Dana versus Lana, Shayna, and Nia. Mandy was taken out of the match almost immediately and while we were receiving an update from her tag team partner Dana Brooke, she got attacked by Reckoning. So, a lot of people on Twitter were like, oh, Charlotte and Naomi are going to be the ones to replace them. That isn't what we got at all. We got Peyton Royce and Lacey Fay. So, I have a few concerns with this. I believe that since Reckoning was the one who, you know, beat up Dana, Reckoning would, I don't know, be on the team? Uh, like, would that make sense? I feel like you also didn't have to pull Dana as well. I felt like you could have kept Dana on the team and have maybe Reckoning beat up Mandy again and write her off and just have Shayna, Nia, Lana, Reckoning, and Dana instead. I felt like you didn't need to replace both of them because Dana was a singles competitor for so long that she, you know, can survive being a single for however long Mandy's out. But... Now, like the whole build of Survivor Series, and we'll see this either Friday or Saturday, depending on when um, me and a certain other person film a video. Um, the build for Survivor Series has been absolutely terrible, and now that you're changing the matches, like, no, stupid. So, I did not like this. I thought this was very stupid. But going on to Team Raw on the men's side, they lost to Retribution. To jobbers. They basically lost to jobbers, because I am still going to call retribution jobbers. AJ, my man, what are you doing? So, I think statistically, I think Team SmackDown has only won one year, and I think that was last year. Like, since 2016 with the initial branch split, I feel like Team SmackDown for the men's team has only won once, and I feel like we're going to see that again on Sunday. But... I like that they're having full team meetings here, but I feel like the constant matches between everybody and just like the ongoing fighting and no one's on the same page, it ruins the points. Where, like, I get like, oh, we can't technically have Raw invade SmackDown or SmackDown invade Raw, but having tension within your own team, it like defeats the whole point because you're all supposed to be on the same page defending your brand, showing like we're the best guys, especially because it's Team Raw, like you're on the A show. Sunday should be very interesting. My third thing, Alexa freaking Bliss. Oh my lord. So we go into the Firefly Funhouse and Alexa and Bray are together and you know they're like making fun of the Miz and this leads to Bray and Miz and right before that like Nikki and Alexa had a segment and Alexa and Nikki start like beating up each other and like during the match between Bray and Miz, <laughs> Alexa literally attacked Johnny, it was so funny. Like Johnny, Johnny tried to attack Bray, and then Alexa literally sprinted, jumped onto the steps, jumped onto Johnny, and they went over into the thunder, like into like where the fan. So I guess like the guardrail. It was so funny. I was literally crying. I was like, oh my god, this is great. This is literally the pairing. Alexa is also someone who I would also kind of want to see on Team Raw. I'm surprised I didn't put Bray on Team Raw because I thought it would have been funny if like everyone was in like the Firefly Funhouse for the team meetings. Um, but I'm really excited that they're now trying to put Alexa into things now. It's not just like, oh, here's Bray doing whatever and like, oh yeah, Alexa's in the corner. Hey, bro, what's up? 
Um, so this is really interesting. I'm excited to see where this leads. This is going to lead to the program between Alexa and Nikki that we need. And hopefully Nikki comes all twisted too. Because like I said in previous episodes, if everyone Bray touches turns, then Alexa should do the same. Ooh. And we need to talk about Joe and Randy. Because, oh my god. Why? That, that, that's just my question. So I was so... If you saw my Twitter, I was very torn. Because... Based on SmackDown, it was like, oh, it makes sense that Drew would win because Drew was the one who confronted Reigns and, like, Randy really didn't care. But then we just put the title on Randy, so then what the hell was the point of taking the title off Drew? And then Miz is like, oh, look at me, I have the money in the bank briefcase, look at me, I'm all special. Going in, so they gave this match a lot, they gave this segment. Like, this whole match, like, good, like, 35 to 40 minutes. They gave it a lot of time. So I was like, wow, Miz is really going to cash in. Like, look how much time they're giving this. No. The match was good. It was a good back and forth. But I just don't, I don't know why Drew won. Like, it's great for him. Nothing against Drew. I love Drew as champion. But why are you going to, why? Like, why? Like, why did you put the title on Randy then? Like, because now is the whole thing going to be like, oh, we're just going to have Randy have, like, gain the title, lose the title, gain the title, lose the title to catch up to Cena and Flair to then have Cena and Randy to have one of them beat Flair's record? I mean, I was, I'm really not looking forward to Drew and Reigns. Like, we saw that already. That was the whole WrestleMania 35 build. We've seen this match. And Reigns won. The only difference is now Drew's the good guy and Reigns is the bad guy. I I don't know. I'm not looking forward to this. But what I am looking forward to is that we do not have new Raw Tag Team Champions. Oh my god. Thank freaking god. So everyone I knew, the Hurt Business is going to win. The Hurt Business is going to win. No, they ain't. I did not want the her business to win. I feel like the New Day and Street Profits make sense because the Street Profits are kind of like a newer New Day. And I'm so excited. They've been teasing with Big E on SmackDown, so it definitely made sense. The tag match last night between Alexander and Benjamin and Woods and Kofi was so freaking good. Like, that was probably the match of the night last night. And... It, it shows, like, the New Day need to be champions. Like, uh, her business? Yeah, maybe a couple weeks. TLC, the Rumble? Yeah. They need the tag titles, but not yet. They need to wait. Um, I'm so, this is probably the match I'm most excited for on Sunday, besides that and Bobby and Sammy, but this is what needed to happen. Thank God. Thank you, WWE. And that has been your Kimmy Quick Five. We'll be back Thursday for Dynamite, and then either Friday or Saturday, depending, I'm going to have a special guest to run through Survivor Series with, and also look for a special surprise sometime this week, because I'm, because something did happen. I'm working really hard on it, I'm just putting the finishing touches on it, so make sure you tune into that. But make sure to follow me on Twitter at Kimmy underscore WWE, follow me on Instagram at Kimmy Talks Wrestling, and I will see you Thursday for our Dynamite Quick Five. Bye, guys.